Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to episode 91 of Those Muckrakers. I'm Pete. And I'm Pat. And uh, yeah, we missed last week, but God, life has been busy and crazy. And, and, and the news, it's there's stuff happening, but it's, it's the same thing over and over, so I don't feel like we've missed that much news. Right, I mean, like, they formalized the thing that was already happening with the whole impeachment thing, which means big stuff is coming, but big stuff has always been coming, so yeah. nothing's really changed. Um, so, uh, we wanted to start out with a Dear Abby, because there's a lot of news to get into, so I don't want it broken up. I actually discussed this Dear Abby with my uh, dear girlfriend, and <laughs> um, she had some interesting uh, points to say. Oh, I'm sorry, we'll call this, I keep forgetting it's a Dear Wesley. <laughs> says, Dear Wesley, women's parents stew over her May-December romance. Uh, Dear Wesley, my husband and I have a 22-year-old daughter, Kara, who is having a relationship with a 65-year-old man, Gary. We do not approve of the relationship. Hmm. I'm not sure if I would either, but go (laughs) ahead. Gary is going through a divorce, and Kara has moved into his rented condo with him. Also, I'm going to go and say right there, you're 65 and you're renting a condo, Gary? Get it together. Yeah, um, but I mean, he's also dating a 22-year-old, so I mean, I think he has his shit together in some ways. Well, she just graduated from college, she doesn't have a job, she has no money, and drives an old car. She was always a good student, never did anything wrong, she didn't date much, and was a wonderful child. She and Gary have been together for almost six months now. Kara knows that we love her, but do not approve of the relationship. She also knows Gary is not welcome in our home, and I kind of agree with that. Uh, she sees nothing wrong with their relationship. She doesn't socialize with her friends as often as she used to. Gary works full-time and also has a job on the weekends. We never speak of him when we talk to our daughter. What is going on? What should we do? When will it end? Where is her head? Uh, sincerely yours, Nervous in New England. Well, maybe if you did talk about all this with her, then you would know what's going on in her head. You, you can't just be like, we don't know what's going on, and we refuse to talk about it. Like, that's that's not going to help anything. First of all, like, okay, so why do you agree that they shouldn't invite him into their home? Well, it's all right. So you are, I think you are free <clears throat> to, you know, to date whoever you want. You're 22 Yeah, they're both years. consenting adults, so yeah. all that's on the up and up. That being said, though, I don't have to have Thanksgiving with a 65-year-old man dating my 22-year-old daughter, and I'm not going to. Fuck that. You date Gary in your own fucking time. He's not part of our life because it's not a serious relationship. You think that there's no way that they're getting married? No. And if there is, I'm not going to the wedding. Fuck that. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not even divorced right. yet. Like, But at that point, you're basically shutting your, your daughter's husband out of your life if they do get married. Yeah, that's fine. And... Fuck him. He's 65. I'm assuming that her parents are probably like close to that age or maybe younger. So how do you feel that you go to dinner with your daughter and her boyfriend who is older than you? That, yeah, I mean, personally, I would find it super creepy, but I wouldn't like completely shut him out of my life just because, you know, he is now a big part of my daughter's life and I wouldn't be shutting my daughter out of my life. Right. I'm not saying shut your daughter out. I'm just saying I don't want to talk to Gary. I'm probably going to hit him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, dude, get the fuck away from my daughter. Like, the fuck are you doing? So I think there's two ways to um, to approach this. One is to just accept that this is a phase that your daughter is going through mm-hmm. that may become a permanent phase and just be nice to Gary, even if he's an older person. It's, it, it's part of who she is now. That's one way to do I it. I like some of the things you're saying, but then some of the other things make me enraged in my brain space. Yeah, because you're picturing yourself having sex with a 65-year-old man, and that's just weird. No! It's worse. I'm picturing myself sitting at a Denny's at 10 in the morning with my daughter and a 65-year-old man who is having sex with my daughter. Is sitting across from you, yes. Yeah. But I'd rather have sex with Gary than my daughter have sex with Gary. Or, you know what? I'm not even making it sexist. I don't want my son to have sex with Gary either. Well, I mean, we're specifically talking about a daughter, so I don't think it's sexist to say daughter. I but know, anyway, but I'm just saying, I, like, I it's not, go- yeah, it's not I, like, I she's a woman, I just, if I had a 22-year-old son, and it's like, your son is fucking a 65-year-old man, I'd be like, no, that's predatory, I don't like that. It does seem a bit, it does seem a bit, uh, what's his name, Roy Moorish, but, um. Yeah, it's very, do you want to have dinner at Denny's with Roy Moore and your daughter? Well, now that I'm picturing Roy Moore, that's so much more weird because he'd be riding up to the Denny's on a horse and you'd have to, like, help him, like, you know, lasso it to the side so it doesn't walk off. And he'd probably be, like, eating other patrons' hats and now you have to pay for it. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> yeah. I've only discussed one way you can handle this. 
The other like... way, the other option is to um, hire Mike from Breaking Bad to just shoot him, and then you don't have to deal with it anymore. Also, he's old. Like, you could poison him. He would die, and no one would be that suspicious. I just like the idea of, like, tell your daughter, like, I love you, but fuck Gary. You, you're welcome, but fuck Gary. Like, God, fucking dirty old man. I don't even know why it bothers me that much. I think it's because you're just in the position of, like, a parent. You're like, ah, oh, just so fuck. And you know it's just... It's the new convertible thing, you know? Like, he's like, I'm a new man after a divorce. I gotta go get some young tail. So, speaking of young tail, what do you think Wesley's stance on this would be, since these are dear Wesley's? That's a very good question. Um, I think Wesley would involve sitting Gary down with some pizza bread. <laughs> I'm picturing Wesley doing something like, well, what you gotta do, see, is that as soon as you find out your daughter's dating him, you find out who his children are and you date them. Yeah. So let's say Gar Gary has a 16-year-old a son. Be like, oh, hey, 16-year-old son, come over and play with my PS4. Oh, it has the good joystick. <laughs> that or I would, that or I would fuck Gary's ex-wife. That was also my first thought, but I mean, I figure equivalent exchange here. Yeah. Find, find someone younger in his life. I just you think it might... after his grandson. He's 18 years old. He's <laughs> so illegal. <laughs> I just like the idea of like, all right, Gary, game on. I'm going to fuck somebody in your family you don't want me to. <laughs> and then whatever not... your, your, your spouse that you're still married with finds out about all this, well, you know, it's not going to be cheating. Just tell her ahead of time, honey, I love you very much and I want to stay married to you. Everything's going to be fine between us. We're going to keep, you know, we're going to get through this. But I have to go have sex with this man's grandson. I would be like, like I, we, ha I would... we have to do it for our daughter, our heart, who we, you know, the person that we made with our love. I got to fuck that young man for her. For I'm, her. Giving, I'm giving my wife the speech from Predator 2. Uh, when the guy's like, what do you want, man? You want money? And he goes, no, man. This not about money. This about power, man. Voodoo magic. That's what I'm going to tell my wife as she's packing up to leave me. Um, do the, um, God, what's the guy's name from uh, the first Terminator? I don't know. There's a lot of guys. Lance Hendrickson. The, uh, uh, I want to say. Arnold Schwarzenegger. It, John um, Connor's father. Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember the it, actor's it, name, but Kyle Reese. Yeah, Kyle Reese. Just to give the uh, Kyle Reese speech about, except this is what you'll be like going after this uh, this old man's grandson. I feel like Kyle Reese because everyone's like, you gotta let your daughter make your own decisions, and I'm trying to explain to them. There is no tomorrow! Yeah, I'm just trying to explain to them and be like, he won't stop! You don't understand! He's a dirty old man! That's all he does! <laughs> and they're just like, sir, you need to calm down, and I'm like, you're not listening to me! Yeah, I'm just saying maybe you should be the dirty old man in this situation and go for this guy's grandkids. I just like the idea of fucking Gary's ex-wife. I'm assuming are like 18 to 25, so it's still going to be weird, but not illegal. I just like the idea of fucking Gary's ex-wife. You know, she's single, she's vulnerable, she needs, you know, someone to help her pick herself up off the floor. And what better way for her to get back at her shitty ex-husband, uh, you know, than the father of the 22-year-old that he is dating, you bang him, right? Yeah, yes. in your face, Gary. And, you know, we're going to, you know, Gary might be a perfectly nice guy who's just in need of, like, you know, comfort, but fuck him. Yep. Fucking, so. Fucking baby boomers, they want everything. The jobs, our 22-year-old daughters. The millennials, yep. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, that's the Dear Wesley. Uh, so I guess we're getting into the news then? Yeah, so a lot of stuff's happened. Do we want to start with Al Baghdadi getting killed? Well, I was going to go all the way back to when the Republicans stormed the meeting, like, two weeks ago now. Okay. Let's do that, and then we can get into Baghdadi. So, God, I mean, a bunch of stuff has happened, but this was just one of the more interesting things. On uh, last Wednesday, 45 House Republicans stormed a closed-door impeachment hearing. I mean, they were promptly thrown out, but a lot of them also broke uh, federal law because a lot of them had unsecured... Uh, cell phones that they brought into this meeting, which is very illegal because if someone was, uh, if their phones were bugged or anything without their knowledge, then, you know, Ooh. they're recording, like, secret information. Yes. You bring up a point I didn't even think about. If some of our congressmen or senators are Russian assets, either by blackmail or whatever, then what better cover to get information on a closed-door session than having a fake, we're storming it with their cell phones on them to record information to get intel. It's a brilliant move. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm throwing that conspiracy out there. So um, 
the conspiracy theory that these assholes were trying to press is um, they're trying or that they're trying to push is that Republicans aren't allowed into these secret Democrat meetings. But that's, of course, bullshit. Like, they're literally just creating a fictitious story and then trying to sell it to uh, the simplest of the American people, you know, a.k.a. their constituents. But the reason why the story is bullshit is because there's actually 47 reporter, or reporters, there's actually 47 Republicans with unfettered access to the impeachment inquiry hearings, including 18 of the 45 people that stormed the closed door uh, hearings. So for those Republicans, they weren't even storming it. They were just entering, you know? This, is, uh, this was a place they were already uh, welcome to be. They just chose to not show up there so that they could storm it later and then tell everyone, see, it's all these secret meetings going on. It's not. You just chose not to come. You know, it's terrible, but it feels like they're trying to do this stupid John Wayne thing but also, on the other side of that, you're like, oh, fuck, what if John Wayne in this cowboy movie is a Russian asset? Yeah, what if in all those John Wayne movies, he uh, he was secretly part of the bandits the whole time, so they were expecting him to show up, and they were surprised when their friends started shooting him, and then he that's, walks off with all of the money. That's why, oh my god, that's why John Wayne is always like the last man standing in all these movies. He's in on it! Yeah, he's always the last one standing because all of his friends trusted him enough to turn their backs to him and then just pop, 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 so them all out. it's kind of funny. The news cycle seems to coincide with what I'm teaching in U.S. history. Uh, yeah. And we just got to this really great piece, and I believe they used to read it in the United States every year, like on the anniversary of it, mm. and it was called Washington's Farewell Speech. Okay. And when Washington was leaving office because, like, he didn't want to be president... And uh, he just wanted to go back to his farm in Mount Vernon and, like, tend his crops and beat his slaves. You know, the idyllic existence we're all working for. Yeah. Naturally. Part of me likes to imagine that Washington in his office had, a, like, a hang-in-there cat. And then he just had pictures of all his slaves, like, in various bondage and being like, yeah, that's who I'm working for. <laughs> you know, I come in every day and I just I work hard for them so I can get back home and beat the shit out of them. Anyway, but I digress. Yep. Um, Washington, while being reprehensible for owning slaves, uh, and then retiring to, and I swear to God, his hobby, you can look this up, he retired and spent his time chasing down runaway slaves. That's very interesting, because, you know, some people say that he was a good man for, like, having it in his will that whenever he's dead, all of his slaves could go free. But, you know, apparently he also rounded up more slaves? I've never heard that before. Well, I don't know if I'd say more, but rounded up slaves who were like, I'm free! Nope. <laughs> oh, fuck, it's Washington! Go, go, go! Um, all I know is if I was owned by somebody and they go, well, you know, Peter, I'm, uh, I'm gonna let you go when I die. I would kill you so fast. Like, you would be dead as that sentence left your mouth. I'd be like, is the will written? Die! <laughs> <laughs> right but anyway like, that's not that's not great incentive to not kill someone if you know that you're enslaved until this person's dying breath i would have huh. hacked off washington's head and been like take it to the lawyer's office i'm free free bitch <laughs> i mean i'm gonna be in a lot of trouble i just killed the father of our nation and hacked his head off they're gonna be real mad about this but right now no 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 you, you you weren't really a person until he died so when you killed him that was technically like the refrigerator falling on him right yeah you were yeah, farm yeah. Equipment. Act, act so, of God. so that like means you're... that's not yeah exactly so it wasn't really a a, a murder it was more like a, a home accident right it's like your car coming off the jacks while you're working on it and crushing you yeah yeah that's gonna be my defense anyway <laughs> but, but i digress uh when washington left he comes up he gives this great speech uh and it basically lists all the things that America should not do. And we promptly did all the things he warned us about that will destroy our country. Um, yep. Some of the greatest hits include, do not get entangled with foreign countries or make permanent alliances as you'll get dragged into all the wars and intrigues of other countries. Check. Did that. Um, you know, uh, one of the good ones was uh, don't form political parties, you know? You should be loyal to your country, not to a party. Uh, check, check, check. Wouldn't fucking, that be nice? Yeah, just fucking did all that. Like, man, Imagine we... if you didn't vote Republican or Democrat, but you had to actually look at people's policies. I mean, Hillary Clinton is clearly the most Republican candidate we've had in a long time. People can say, oh, Trump has the R next to his name. You're right, but he's not a conservative. Hillary was a conservative. She had all the Republican He has the R next to his mind. name. 
for retard. Yeah, like, so, yeah. But that's the reason why this is yeah. not at all about policy anymore. It's all about tribalism. Yes. Now, the Democrats within their own party have a sort of a war of ideas, especially between whether or not health care should be universal or um, we should just continue to uh, gut the middle class. Right. But, you know, outside of those internal party debates, who people vote for is just whether they have an R or a D next to their name. Yeah, uh, because if there was no parties, which I'm very strong in, like, why don't we outlaw parties? Yeah. I mean, it would be very hard to do, and our government would get real weird, but, man, yeah, fuck parties. Uh, I don't, why don't we, why don't I, we um, send uh, Mitch McConnell adrift on an iceberg? But, like, we couldn't wait uh, for Washington to, like, step out the door, and then everyone's like, we got our parties! Good! All right, fight! And then we immediately started <laughs> immediately started fighting. Um, and it's just Long gotten worse. one. Point. And they knew that we had uh, problems with tribalism. And one of the other things he brought up, which we also have fucked up so bad, was that uh, make sure that the, the um, different branches jealously guard their power, right? Because yes. the tendency of humans is to consolidate all the power into one place because we all like a big, strong Hulk Hogan dude to be like, I'll take care of you, brother. Like, it makes us feel safe at night. And we promptly did that, too. We're like, ah, just give all the power to the president. Ah, fuck it. I like how that sounded a lot like Giuliani. <laughs> ah, the president! Ah, America! There's some great Gigliani news in the news. Oh, like to hear God. It. I, I don't know whether to love or hate that man. Like, he's he's incredible. Let's do the, let's do, um, God, we got to start a segment called, This is America! And then we just do Gigliani news. So, uh, in this week's Gigliani news, he, um, well, two things. First of all, it came out that one month after he was named uh, Chief of America's Cybersecurity, he had to go to... Uh, <laughs> what? <the> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I never has a person been more unsuited to a job than Giuliani being in charge of cybersecurity. Oh, yeah. my God. Can we just make Bobo the Clown the Secretary of Defense? I mean, that's basically what we have right now. But, I mean, Bobo the Clown's already busy being president, so, you know, his hands <laughs> are kind of tied. Uh. But the thing, the thing about Gigliani is he is a pro-Russian asset, clearly. So, of course, him being in charge of cy cybersecurity means that Russia is free to just hack our elections however the fuck they want, and there's nothing you can do about it, folks. That's why I don't really believe in the integrity of America's elections anymore. It's just whoever Russia wants to elect. Which brings but us I to digress. another thing that Washington said. Washington said it doesn't matter who is president. What truly matters is who is president next, and that the mm. sanctity and the peaceful transition of power is observed. So I hope so. Yeah, but part of that you... is believing uh, that someone deserves to be president based on some kind of process. Even if you're not happy about it, a fair right. and free election is a way to uh, determine who sh you know who's at right. bat next. I... But we didn't have a fair election. Trump clearly didn't win on his own. It was with Russia's help. Yeah, I loathe that man. I can't. I loathe him more than traffic, and I think traffic is ridiculous. I loathe him more than people bringing their children to the archery range, and I don't mean like, oh, my son's learning archery. I mean like a baby, like a screaming baby, to an archery range. I loathe the president more than that because that's the most ridiculous thing I've experienced in my life, and I think this guy's even more ridiculous than that. Yeah. So if he had won on like merit, I'd be like, fucking America made a bad decision. Oh well, we got to live with it until we can vote him out. But he didn't, and that's the problem. Yep. Yep. But anyway, in Gigliani news, about yeah. a month after he became the um, in charge of, or he was put in charge of cybersecurity, apparently he locked himself out of his uh, phone by entering the wrong password ten times. So he had to go to the uh, the Apple Genius store to get his phone unlocked. That's just kind of a fun fact. But well, we have another bit of uh, phone news from yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah, Secretary yeah. of Cybersecurity. I was about and to get to that. Yeah, that he uh, decided to sit on his phone and butt dial a reporter, and the reporter was able to hear him talking about uh, wanting to get dirt on Ukraine and needing lots of money and all kinds of weird, strange, super incriminating bullshit. This is, uh, I heard a really great interview recently with Ralph Nader about the impeachment process. Nader brings up a good point. Uh, about the impeachment that we're putting all our eggs in the Ukraine basket, right? And that's an absolutely impeachable offense. But Nader 
brings up a fantastic point that no, we should we should bring all of the guns to bear. We should have a 12 point fucking impeachment like this and this and this and this and this and then and then and then uh, so that it is irrefutable that he has broken his oath of office and betrayed the American people on multiple levels at multiple times. But Pelosi's, they're too cautious. They, they're worried that like, oh, we don't know if we have enough support. Well, he says you're not going to have enough support until you bring all your, all the might and justice of, you know, like impeachment to bear. And we're not doing that. And I'm so worried that he's going to slither away again. I mean, it doesn't matter because there's no way the Republicans are going to uh, vote him out no matter but, what. It's but, just going to be like but, the Kavanaugh but, hearings. It doesn't matter what they want because if you get enough people on your side, they're only worried about their electorate. So if their electorate in any way shifts just enough so that they're scared about re-election, they're going to stop sucking his dick and go, oh, man. Maybe we should find us a new dick to suck. Yeah. Yeah. This so... one's old and slimy. <laughs> this one fell in the dirty trash. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> not, the, not the recyclables, the dirty trash. <laughs> the one with the cat vomit paper towels in it. Oh, oh, the baby diapers and the uh, uh. yeah. The, 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 being, the, yeah. The, the old chicken that's already growing like moss, and it's like, oh. We what we, we talking need, about? We need a William Defoe moment of just like. Ah, you know, he's just screaming about all the impeachment thing. We need all the impeachment stuff. Just like all the shit. Be like, you don't like that article? Here's another one. Oh, you're not sure about that? How about this one? You don't like that? Oh, we got a pile. Like, because you've got... You, the case is made, and they're just moving so slowly, and they're going to lose... They're going to lose it. I don't know. I mean, okay, they actually are playing it pretty slick right here, because you know that it's just about to... St I, we talked about this earlier, that it's not really... Not that much is going to change, but one thing will change, and that's that these um, closed-door meetings are all about to be public. Yes. So all this stuff that we know that have been causing the Republicans to moan and groan and twitch and stew is about about to be told to the American people. Now, all of this won't be necessarily what we nail them on, but everyone's going to hear all of this. Yeah. And it's going to just with nonstop coverage of these impeachment hearings. Guess what's coming up, Peter? The midterms. Thanksgiving. What, what's every wait, what? Everyone is about to go home for Thanksgiving right after all these great big discussions are being had. So everyone at every Thanksgiving table across America will be talking about the impeachment hearings. God Everyone's going to be talking about what a criminal Trump is. Whether they're on his side or not, they'll be forced to recognize that this is happening. And That's gonna, why this and is so smooth. Damn, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, you're going to have all the diehard supporters sitting at the table with their, like, neoliberal, like, sons and grandsons, and, like, everyone's going to have to hear it. And, yeah, oh, man, you know what? That's a fucking 4D chess move I didn't think about. Shit. Yeah, I, yeah Nancy mostly, Pelosi knows what she's doing. Mostly because at my Thanksgiving, uh, I hold what I call the king's peace, which right. is, you don't say something stupid and racist, uh, I won't call you an idiot, uh, in before before we get to the turkey, <laughs> you know what I mean. You don't bring after, up the after you, the turkey, the gloves are off. But you you don't bring up impeachment, and neither will I. But I swear to God, this year, if someone starts going, well, I think what the Democrats are doing is just abominable. I'm gonna be like, yeah, you think that's abominable? How about having Commander in Chief, who's betrayed the American people in his oath of office, who has enriched himself? What about all the stuff he's done, huh? Oh, but it's fine, because he's your guy. Is that what it is? Why don't we just go ahead and call him king? You want a king, right? Is king good? You like a king? You want, you want a king? You want a king? You want a king? I'm going to get thrown out of my house. Yeah. I mean, that's basically what they want. They want King Trump to be above the law, because, I mean, we've been... Oh, my God. Just rewinding a bit. Yeah, okay, he's... Conspiring to fuck over Ukraine, holding back weapons unless they help him uh, defeat a political opponent. But before that, there's the baby cages, and there's the thousands and thousands, if not millions, of children he's traumatizing, um, dozens he's murdered in his baby cages. And before that, uh, there's it, the incitement to violence, which is an impeachable offense. Um, there is the violation the of the emoluments clause, which is an impeachable offense. There is misappropriation of congressionally earmarked funds which is an impeachable offense. You know what I mean? 
Um, right, he was he was the unindicted co-conspirator, individual one in the Cohen yeah. cases. Whenever he misappropriated campaign finances uh, by paying off porn stars with uh, donation or donors' money, there is uh, uh, there, th- yeah, there's so many wonderful things to discuss this Thanksgiving. And um, one thing that has been forgotten about in the shuffle is the grotesque way he handled the um, the hurricane that slammed into uh, fuck, what's it called, Puerto Rico, and caused over three thousand people to die in Puerto Rico because he told everyone, I did an A-plus job, okay, folks? Because everyone thought that, oh, okay, Puerto Rico's fine, then we don't need to keep helping them. And so thousands of people died because for months and months they went without power, infrastructure, hospitals, etc. Yeah, they're still, uh, they're still having trouble. But there's, now, yeah, that's there's... not a directly illegal thing he did, but that is still him killing thousands of people, and not to mention the way he's been disassembling government by keeping critical positions empty, by putting only the worst, most disgusting, and unqualified people into critical positions, such as being in charge of the environment, energy, our fucking children's future with uh, fucking the. De- uh, DeBoss being in charge of the school. She's still there. Um, urban housing. He's fucking over minorities. Super goddamn I hard. Loved, I still There's... love that what's-his-name just misappropriated a whole bunch of HUD funds and then nothing happened. Yeah, Ben Carson. Uh, yeah. He bought a goddamn desk and then blamed it on his wife and so nothing happened. He bought furniture that is worth more than I, a- than I am. Like, if you look at, like, what I'm worth on paper, he bought right, furniture he... that's worth more than all my total combined assets. Right, if you combined um, Peter's like monthly income and uh, the value of his internal organs and skin and all the other stuff that you could uh, chop yeah. off and sell in the black market, Ben Carson's desk is still worth more. And you, if you're from America, you paid for it. You paid for Ben Carson's desk. How does that make you feel? Because it's uh, your tax money he bought it with. Yeah, not good. You know, I would have rather everybody got like a 50 cent tax rebate. Yeah. Well, it probably been less than been... 50 cent, but at least some of us could have got you know two quarters but yeah point being there's i guess thanksgiving day themed there's a cornucopia of impeachable offenses a bounty if you will for all of us to share and enjoy and i'm a little bit annoyed because i can handle my grandma my parents are pretty like you know they're not going to get into it but the wild card's going to be there and the wild card is my trump loving uncle oh no um that um there's always the crazy uncle yeah, it's always an uncle, isn't it? Like, there's always, like, an uncle that's just like, yeah, well, I think that all people of color should be summarily executed. <laughs> what? Yep. Why don't you put some more food in your mouth and stop talking? That's, yeah, uh, I'm, already getting yep. pre- I'm already getting pre-riled. See, you're getting my, you're getting my blood up. Yeah, isn't it going to be awesome? And this is just going to keep going throughout the entire holiday gauntlet. Like, this is just going to keep hammering people. So by next year, because you know they're all about to... Um, uh, there's only a little bit more time that they're going to be in office, and then uh, everyone leaves for the holidays, and so we just have to wait until, like, the, what is it, in February? Maybe it's, like, late January, but anyway, they take a su- significant amount of time off, the uh, the Congress, and so whenever they get back together, that's when the impeachment's really going to start to ramp up, and it will be probably coming to its conclusion right before the, um, right before we have our Democratic nominee. So at that point, uh, he'll have, you know, of course, the uh, Senate's going to vote not to remove him, but that's going to be part of the entire campaign for who's going to be president. There's never going to be well, a like speech they, where they don't talk about him being impeached. Like they said, and they, that's, that's a stain, that's a stain he'll never get rid of, is that it's almost inevitable the House will impeach him even if the Senate doesn't remove him. So, mm-hmm. no matter what he says, he'll be the third president in the history of all the presidents of the United States to have ever been impeached. Yeah, by this point with uh, Richard Nixon, he had already stepped down. The, the formal inquiry has begun as of yesterday, I want to say. I yeah. think yesterday. No, I'm still hoping for like a miracle. I'm like, maybe, just maybe we can remove him, but maybe not. But still, that'll bother him. Cause, so recently... Um, oh, he is, you know, he's swearing again, like, a lot. He's yelling bullshit at all of his rallies, on the news, and all caps on Twitter. He, like, he is swearing his head off, so you know that it's gotten to him. Yeah, because he had stopped that for a while, and he had kind of smoothed out. The other thing but, was, you know, he he trotted out and lorded it around that they recently killed uh, Abu uh, Baker al-Baghdadi. The, oh, Baghdadi, the, yeah, you mentioned that at yeah, the top. the leader of ISIS, right? Because... The one thing he could, because uh, uh, Obama got Osama bin Laden, and he there's no there's no more Osama bin Laden. So he comes out in the most undignified fucking like speech. I guess they got into the compound, and the dude like crawled into a hole with three kids in a suicide vest and blew himself up. 
Um, with, he um he was chased into a tunnel with dogs after him, and he like hit a dead end, so he blew up. But yeah, yeah, he like killed three kids too, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Something like that. What a piece of shit. Fucking deserved it. But uh, Trump couldn't just come out and like you know accept it. He had to be like it was bigger. It was even bigger than uh, uh Osama bin Laden. He died like a dog. He was crying. I heard that he said like please Trump forget like just you know please most... Trump forgive me. God. Yeah. The most ridiculous fucking shit. I heard that he pooped himself, and it was so gross. Like, you know, like... Yeah, he actually described the guy blowing himself up and how the soldiers had to, like, find chunks of his body and say there's not much left of him, but they found enough to be able to, to, to remove the carcass and take all the bits out, and we knew that it was him because there was enough to do that, but there was, oh, there was so gross. It was yeah. just, like, weird details he went into. But ugh. The best part was, so he's like, oh, I got this, they'll like me, right? And then he goes to a baseball game... And gets booed. Yeah, so, God, no, before we no, get to that, first no, of all... No president has ever been booed in a baseball game. That's incredible. Yeah, that's amazing. Like, so that was a thing of beauty, but I have, like, one better than that. Actually, I have a couple better than that. But before before we get into that, when uh, Trump was up there trying to say how, you know, what a big deal it is that I got Baghdadi, you know why we knew that it was a um, a big deal that uh, Obama got Osama bin Laden? Because everyone was like, ah, he's not there. Don't do it. Don't go in there. It's a bad idea. And he was like, let me be clear. I'm going to make this call and we're going to do it. And he was right. Everyone else was wrong. He was fucking right. We knew we knew that it was a big deal when uh, Obama did that because Obama didn't have to tell everyone that it was a big deal. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's just wonderful how Trump has to like keep emphasizing how this is the big, the best, bigliest thing ever. And then he was so happy when he went to the ball game because we saw him on the the jumbotron and we see his face light up and he's all like, "Oh, everyone sees me. Oh, I'm the center of attention. This is the best day ever." And he's just thinking that America's about to cheer him because he's so used to his sycophants and he's so used to his rallies where everyone cheers his name. And now here he is with the real American people, not you know, not sycophants. Not not toadies, not people, you know, massaging his ego, and not weird cult rallies, but actual real Americans, and they start booing the fuck out of him and chanting "lock him up, lock him up," and you can watch his happy expression just melt like a frog in a microwave. And there's just, nothing, mm. you know, there's nothing more American than baseball or apple pie. So the most American of games is like boo. Also, so going back to uh, go ahead. Do you think the Secret Service would have to throw themselves in front of a foul ball if it was headed right for his face? Oh, probably. But maybe they could just do like uh, George Bush with the shoe and be a little slow about it and hope. Yeah, that's him. that's a weird thing that George Bush did not get assassinated when I, that's something we forget about. A man had time to take his shoes off, both shoes, and throw them at George Bush. By the way, great reaction time on George W. Bush. That was. You know what I mean? Like, he ducked both of them, but, yeah. you know. That, that was one of my favorite parts about W, was that he was able to dodge the shoes thrown at damn near point-blank range. If you have a ch if you have the time to take off both shoes and throw them at a president, you have the time to assassinate the president. And it's crazy yeah. that I feel like Secret Service was probably like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? If, if, if it was gun, you go into action. Your training has prepared you. But if it's yeah. fucking, if it's a pair of dockers, you're like, What? What? Oh, oh <laughs> shit, there's two shoes. He's got two feet. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Right? Like, oh, God, what about the gloves? Get the gloves. But, um... <laughs> but, yeah, so, so... I would love that if someone would throw shoes at Trump. That would be the best. So, uh, going back to a thing you discussed earlier, how your hatred of traffic. You know what Trump did to you this, uh, this weekend? Uh... He backed up... He backed up traffic much worse in New York by coming back to it for uh, a UFC match. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know what happened at the UFC match? He got booed! He got booed even louder than he was at the football game. And he was so upset about that that he declared after leaving the UFC match that uh, he's permanently moving his residency, his official residency, from New York to Florida. Good. And I hope the sea level will rise and cover you. And swallow him whole. <laughs> Just you and all that you represent. Uh, yeah, go to Florida. No one in New York wants you, dude. That's how bad it is, because New Yorkers are a very tribal people. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, New Yorkers are all, like, supporting their own and this, that, and the other. But at the same time, they're also quick to call bullshit. They don't fucking like Giuliani anymore. I don't know if they ever have. And they sure as fuck don't like this guy, you know? 
God, poor Giuliani, whose brain's melting. I'm not even sure if he is Trump's lawyer anymore. And Trump yeah. was asked about that, and even Trump was like, oh, I don't know. Fad bear. You ask him. I just can't wait to till fucking him. Giuliani just tries to escape from himself to Mexico. <laughs> you see him down in a bar wearing, like, a super racist sombrero. <laughs> America! I mean, Mexico! <laughs> Viva la Mexico! Uh, so all all my other notes are just like this and that. I have some felony bribery news. Oh, is this the one about him bribing senators and shit? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Oh, yeah, let's hit him with that, Pat. It's uh, just fun fact. Uh, Trump's actually committing felony bribery by um, giving fundraising cash to a lot of different GOP senators ahead of his impeachment trials beginning. So, you know, Mitch McConnell is like, well, maybe what you should do is just stop being so mean to them because they have your life in their hands. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't think... I, I feel like what he's doing is completely pointless because this doesn't change anything. The GOP is definitely going to vote not to impeach him no matter whether it gives them money or not. So he's just layering crimes on top of this already very stacked crime sandwich. It's for no reason. Like, this isn't this doesn't change anything. This doesn't help him one way or the other. It's just making him a bigger criminal. Yeah, but I think he's just doing... He's flailing. He's doing everything he can to try to help himself. Um, because the Senate's probably not going to, you know, remove him. Yep. But, I mean, he does keep going on uh, TV and everything and saying, it's all a bullshit witch hunt. And it's like, wow, he, um, he just doesn't care anymore. <laughs> He'll just say anything. He'll just do anything. Um, oh, in uh, Karma's a Bitch news, you know, when uh, the Republicans were still in power back in um, 2016 and just assuming that uh, Hillary was going to win, uh, they themselves were the ones that put forth the rule that the minority party could not subpoena witnesses, and right. they expected to abuse this power to harass Hillary Clinton. So um, instead, the Democrats are now gleefully using it for the betterment of America and to the great fury of the GOP who never saw themselves losing power. Well, I wouldn't even call it gleefully. The reason, the reasoning that they're doing it, and they actually asked Ralph Nader about this, is he was talking about, because what they'll do is they'll try to derail the hearing by just subpoenaing random people to, like, relitigate Hillary Clinton. Yeah. They'll just try to change the narrative and they'll be like, uh, we have subpoenaed. A uh, former doorman to a building that Hillary Clinton stayed at in 1987, and then just roast him with questions about random nonsense just to derail the hearing. Where were you when Hillary killed? What's that guy's name? I don't know. Uh, there's so Epstein. many. Where were it, you when Hillary killed Epstein? Yeah, there's so many fucking fake. Uh, Hillary did this. Hillary did that. Fucking news. Um, I did like. So it's fun that we talk about stuff, and I'll go on Fox News. Um, and so the Fox News story about the UFC was Trump praises, Trump praises UFC fighter who called him a bad motherfucker in video. And I'm like, it's funny that you bring that up, but uh, you don't bring up the fact that everybody at a UFC match booed him. Yeah, no, Fox News never does that. They live in their own little bubble of reality where you remember last year when everyone at the UN just cracked up laughing at the president, like mockingly, right? The whole world was laughing at him because he tried to say that he was the greatest president that America's ever had and that just cracked up the whole room. Fox News never aired that clip. They never told their viewers about it. They never let anyone know that the whole world is laughing at America's president and at, by extent, America because you got to understand the rest of the world doesn't see the nuance between leader and country. They just see America being a giant gassy blowhard right now. Yeah. Do you who's listening to this podcast hate Trump? Guess what? The world thinks that you're Trump. Yeah. You're in America. You know the difference. The rest of the world doesn't see it. Trump is your avatar right now. Try to chew on that and sleep well tonight. Well, the big problem, uh, fucking, I keep losing my train of thought. This guy makes me so mad. Um, uh, I was going to say something about foreign countries and fucking Trump being our avatar, and then my mind my mind left. Uh, I, I've lost my... I've lost it. It's gone. Whatever point I was going to make is gone. But that, I still don't have a point. happens to me sometimes, too. <laughs> I still don't have a point. I'm like, but I still don't have a point. Uh, <laughs> America, lock America. her up. Lock her up. I don't know. Uh, yeah, good. I him move to dialed again. Time to go to Mexico! Let him move to fucking Florida. Let Florida flip blue. You know what I mean? <laughs> that would be amazing. Ah, so, let's see. Um, fake news over Flynn. I, 
Fox News and Russia bots were pushing super hard uh, the other day to try and say that Flynn was a victim of, oh, right, 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 a crooked FBI investigation. For some reason, this is just like a story that uh, bubbled to the surface where um, Fox News tried to say that um, Flynn was, you know, uh, God, what is this? Oh, it's a, a weird conspiracy theory that was pushed to the front pages for a while. Nothing much to it. It's already disappeared. But uh, Flynn's the um, one of the people that colluded with the Russians to get Trump elected. Right. Uh, though his actual arresting crime is lying to the FBI. He was lying to them about the Russians, not about not colluding with the Russians, which is what he did. But it's just easier to get him on the lie than it is to prove that he was colluding with the Russians. So they went with lying. But anyway, I digress. Um, they tried to say that one page out of the entire document was slightly edited. Ergo, the whole thing's a scam or a sham, I should say. So, and he should be uh, let free. He's one of the few people that have pled guilty already. So he's guilty legally. There's nothing that can be done. He pled guilty. He pled out. That's it. He can't so be let go at this point. He can't be pardoned by the president. Um, good question. I'm not. Was this a federal crime? I guess it was. I hear an ad in the background. Sorry. I, God damn it. Fox News, not only do you suck, but you play stupid ads. Yep. But yeah, so, uh, I mean, there's not really too much to that. Fox was just trying to say that uh, the document was uh, doctored, so he must be innocent. And Russian bots were pushing that story very, very hard to try and make it look like this was actually a thing that the American people cared about. But nobody cares about Flynn, and Fox News viewers aren't smart enough to remember who that was. Anyway, they just know he's a Trump person, so they're like, Oh, yeah, the goddamn Democrats and their conspiracy theorists. Oh, that was well, another thing. Nunez this week tried to say that um, the Democrats are just uh, following some guy who's a lying charlatan who floats conspiracy theories and um, tra-la-la-la-la. And I'm like, wow, you're just describing the Republicans perfectly, and you're not even conscious of the fact that there's no like male leader of the Democrat Party right now that's doing anything or making up anything. Like, well, well, who the fuck are you, Nunez? Let me, uh, let me talk to you about this real quick. So I'm on Fox News. Because uh, they give me so many great things to talk about. Uh, right. So uh, this is kind of a turn, but this is something I always like to address. Apparently, a far-left senator, Elizabeth Warren, a Democrat from Massachusetts, has marketed herself as the Democratic presidential candidate with a plan for about everything. She's right about that, but her incredibly expensive plans would cause enormous harm, especially her dangerous, nightmarish, and fantasy-based Medicare for All plan. Um. How is it fantasy-based if every other civilized first-world country has it and it works effectively for them? Oh, it gets even better. Uh, if you want to destroy America's healthcare system, deprive Americans of choice and timely access to medical care, cause needless deaths and create a gigantic new government healthcare bureaucracy, and throw an estimated 2 million hardworking Americans in the health insurance industry onto the unemployment rolls, well, you're in luck. Because Warren's got a plan for that. So nah, wait, not gonna cry a tear for people in the insurance industry. Yeah, are we worried jobs? about the insurance industry jobs now? Is that what the uh, fucking? I'm so sorry, your insurance job is gone. Like that's what you're fucking worried about. As a uh, as a guy who's a journalist for a living, yeah, uh, tell me more about the uh, the tragedy of uh, losing your job to. Um, to just the march of time like that's fucking how things go I want, suck it up buttercup i want to know exactly what choice americans have in healthcare. to die we yeah. have the choice to die or to lose our house right like if, if you get sick either lose your house or you die or you lose your house then die because your house mm -hmm. it's only worth so much money yeah, yeah, and eventually, if you have to stay in the hospital, literally one week in the hospital costs as much as buying a fucking house. So, well, well here's yeah. a, let me spin this for you. You're married, right? Imagine years down the road, Pat. You're married with your wife. You get cancer. You lose the house, but your cancer is cured, right? Then your wife gets cancer. Right. What about your second house? Uh-oh. I guess you better well, have two yeah. houses. I guess that, that was your choice not to buy two houses. Fox News? Fox News uh, has has addressed this and said, well, you know, it's just really a problem with millennials. They're the ones that don't uh, save up well because what they do is they go out and they buy these $1,000 smartphones. Maybe if they uh, didn't buy that, then they would have money to pay for their health bills. And I'm like, you motherfuckers have no idea how much medical bills cost. It's 
thousand goddamn dollars to stay in the hospital for one week. Again, again, a hundred thousand dollars. It's ten thousand dollars to have an ambulance come and get you. You know the ambulances you see trucking around the city? That fast moving motherfucker, that's ten thousand dollars the hospital just made. Not the ambulance driver, not anyone that's actually, you know, doing anything. No, the hospital and the people that own that hospital and some bureaucrat sitting in a desk somewhere just made himself ten thousand dollars that he can light on fire and use to light a cigar additional that's what you're paying for right now yeah additionally added to that yeah these damn millennials well you know what we're paying for your fucking health care you old fucks like that's that's the the thing thing. all these old people are sucking that sweet medicare medicaid tit you know what i mean like they're covered but you know, oh, yeah, they already have government health care. They just yeah. don't want other people to have it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. Because Fox it's... News is lying to them to get votes for the Republicans because Murdoch wants the the Fox News people to lie to the American people to get more votes for the Republicans because fucking that asshole Murdoch liked Richard Nixon and he really liked. Uh, yeah, that's 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 the long. Well, here's and short what I don't understand. He, Maybe liked, you he was a big this. fan of Ronald Reagan. He wanted Reagan to reign forever. They keep saying stuff like it's going to cost us fifty till fifty two trillion over ten years, uh, and double our national debt um, when it comes to for implementing no. health care. Now, hang on to that number fifty two trillion, right? Because I'm interested. That's a fictional amount. Uh, well, what I'm interested in is is uh, how much the uh, how much the Middle East wars have cost America. I'm interested to see how much we've spent on war. Uh, oh, okay, nice. So this is ridiculous. So you're telling me that um, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan only cost us 2.4 trillion, but you're telling me that Medicare is going to cost 52 trillion? How the fuck does that happen? Here's the thing: Republicans are perfectly willing to spend trillions of dollars to murder people across the ocean, right? But they they would never spend a penny to save an American here on our homeland. Yeah, Whereas not, Democrats, <laughs> what they want to do is save Americans here on our homeland not, and not shoot people across the ocean. Not one so penny for healthcare. So decide which party you want to be as: the party <laughs> of murder everyone or the party of save everyone. Not one. Not and one. You can penny say, for oh, healthcare. well, what if the Democrats? fail to save people and it's like well you know what they're not perfect but they're fucking trying right Right. the other option is to do someone who's actively not trying and in fact is doing the opposite so not one penny for health care but 2.4 trillion pennies to murder people overseas you're telling me that we can't get we can't turn our our murder machine on america and be like we're gonna use this we're gonna shoot people with insulin bullets yeah right we're gonna refit all of this to save lives but also, I mean, the numbers are giving you a bullshit for a number of reasons, including the fact that a lot of costs will be shifted around. So you'll end up uh, net benefiting. Like, you'll end up losing far less money than whatever tax increases may come with uh, Medicare for all, you know? Yeah. So uh, things like... Um, uh, I don't know. It's a lot of fucking math. Listen to Elizabeth Warren talk on it at any time and she would explain the gist of it. But just know that this will not cost you more uh, overall. You will co- you will walk home with a bigger paycheck at the end of the day. Uh, seriously, that's how it works. I don't know how. It's some sort of voodoo math. Uh, case in point, your employee doesn't your employer doesn't have to take money out of your paycheck for your health care plan. So you'll and anyway. The, Either listen way. To her talk about it. I don't know the math well enough. I'd I just be... know that she swears up and down that this will not cost you that much more money. How many... Also, the Republicans are given like the highest possible estimate and probably adding on fictional bullshit on top of that. How much did Ben Carson's uh, desk cost? Uh, like uh, $40,000. $31,000 and a dining set for his office. So you're telling me that we can. in that ballpark. So we're telling me that like Ben Carson can spend thirty-one thousand dollars on a dining set, yet it's crazy to think that people should have health care. You know what? Can we take thirty-one thousand dollars away from Ben Carson and then like just start putting it into like a big national jar and we're just gonna look at all these stupid things that we're spending money on and then we just take that money and we put it in a jar and then we look at it when Congress is in session and we go, all right, dump it out. How many pennies are in there? All right, we're getting closer to fifty-two trillion. 
Here's the other thing is that the healthcare system in America is largely a scam. Like it costs more to have healthcare in America than in any other country because they can get away with charging you more because they're sucking money from insurance companies and not from actual people that are paying. Ergo, if the insurance companies all disappear, hospitals have to readjust how much everything costs and the government won't have to be, you know, taking that much more from people. They'll be right. taking a much smaller amount to adjust to the new prices of everything. That's the thing. And you so, can say, oh, well, what about what about doctors and people that work in the med in the medical industry won't they be making less money no because it is the billionaires sitting in their big fat desks in some skyscraper in new york they're the ones that whose bottom line will shrink everyone else will stay pretty much the same so you know uh human insulin uh let's see human insulin right now costs anywhere from 174 to 300 dollars a vial right now how much does it cost to make it uh I'm going to assume that less than Ben Carson's desk. So here's the thing. I'm typing it in. Here's the thing. How much about... does it cost to make a vial of insulin? Um, it, you know, so you just, how much does it cost uh, to buy one? Oh, it's 174 to $300. I, I... So $300 to buy the needle. You know how much the cost of production is for one vial? One Ben Carson's desk? I have an exact amount. How much? $2 two dollars and 28 cents so that's the problem they're basing the healthcare argument on insulin being that jacked up 300 dollars a vial price and not the two or three dollar yep. price it probably will be when the government is able to go ha yeah we're not paying that fuck you exactly and that's the problem with their bullshit 50 trillion dollar number Yep. Uh, it would be $52 trillion if we still paid the ridiculous, outrageous amounts that we paid uh, for stuff like uh, a lady I read a story about a while back decided to actually go through her hospital bill and looked at what stuff cost. And like there were like four screws that they had to put into her, right? Yeah. The screws themselves were like $300 a piece. Um, she actually, mm -hmm. I think it embarrassed the hospital so much. They end up taking a whole bunch of the stuff off, but that's just how much medical devices cost. Like, uh, uh, let's see. I yeah. want to know how much does a colonoscopy cost? A colonoscopy costs, uh, around $5,000 for the procedure and another 5,000 for the stay in the hospital during the time of the procedure. So around 10, $17,000. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, in America, it's $5,000 to have them look at your colon, right? Um, but, yeah, uh, that, another... for the actual procedure itself, without the other stuff. But Which is basically they shove a camera up your ass. Why do they need $3,000? I don't know. Um, well, why do I need $3,000? I know this uh, weird guy down the street who'll look up my ass for free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's got a camera. Just fucking pay him for some wet wipes to wipe it off afterward. <laughs> Um, oh, all right. So in the United States, it's $5,000 to look up your ass, right? Yeah. You, you know how much it costs in Australia? How much? $765, mate. Even though that's still a lot, that sounds reasonable. Just because if someone's sticking something way up my ass, I want them to be gentle and know what they're doing. For the price of 765 cups of coffee from the gas station, you too can have somebody look up your ass. Yep. Um, so right. that means so, that I'm not going to have somebody look up my ass until in the United States until it becomes an emergency. And by that point, I'll probably be dead of whatever it is that's up my ass. Exactly. All right. So um, we've been falling gradually out of sync over the past uh, 10, 15 minutes, just like as the Internet connection gets worse and worse. And we're approaching the hour mark anyway. So what do you say we wrap this up and hit them with the socials, Pete? Uh, you know, I don't know the goddamn socials, Pat. So this is where you ask me to... Damn it, Pat. You hit him with the socials. All right. Anyone listening to us, if you would like to send us your own, dear Wesley, you can do so at thosemuckrakers at gmail.com. Send us an email. Tell us your story. We'll tell it to the people, and we'll see what the people have to say about it. Uh, if you would like to, uh, if you'd like to contact us otherwise, you can also do so at at those muckrakers on Twitter, or you can email us, or you can go into any of our comment sections on YouTube, on SoundCloud, uh, basically just those two, and leave a comment. Um, oh, also, know... also, we have um, one book for sale, Dusk Belt number one, uh, Give Me Back My Life. It's a fun little Twilight Zone story. The sequel to it is going to be out very soon, so look for that. So, okay, go on. Yeah, uh, you know, just uh, in closing, guys, 
Uh, you know that a ninety uh, a dominatrix that will do all kinds of stuff to your ass only charges ninety three dollars in America. So for ninety three dollars, uh, I could probably rent the colonoscopy camera and have a dominatrix look up my ass for me. I'm just saying.